many thanks for this introduction. And uh, I will speak more as a talk, not a speech, but a talk, uh, because this is the most uh, interesting way to use these moments we will be together. Uh, and in fact, I'm coming with a, a very simple message, is that uh, the fall of the Berlin Wall was the highest moment in European history of building bridges among Europeans. And in fact, uh, it was about uh, bringing unity back to Europe. But I really believe that Berlin can be a central place to breed bridges, provided that we can work with all citizens of the European Union, of Europe, and in fact, all citizens of the world. So this is the, the main message I'm bringing today. Well, before I, I start uh, making my arguments about this, I cannot uh, resist uh, to refer that I myself, I have a, a personal, emotional connection with Berlin, uh, starting as a very little child, because uh, it happened that my parents drove a black Volkswagen from Lisbon in Portugal to Berlin uh, because my father was invited by Willy Brandt to visit the town. And then my, my father became the mayor of Lisbon. This, that's why he was here. He was here exactly in 1961. And so we remember this uh, because all of a sudden, my parents were warned they should uh, leave the eastern part of the city because a wall was to be closed. Mm. So they escaped from uh, the wall being closed in the very day of the, the big decision. Mm. Then, of course, I remember uh, as a young person to be here uh, and looking to the eastern part of the city as a kind of forbidden city. We could not enter this part of the city. Mm. Uh, but of course, uh, the, the big moment for me was when I could visit Berlin after the fall of the, the Berlin Wall and feeling the joy, the emotion we could see in the streets all over the city because there was no longer a wall. Mm? And I could share this fully because I myself, as a Portuguese, I was coming from an experience of a peaceful, democratic revolution, which uh, has concluded a dictatorship. <coughs> and so I could completely understand the joy of the people in the streets. Mm? So this is just to say that, yes, I have deep emotional connections with, uh, with Berlin because of this. Now, my main argument is as a European politician. Um, and here, I'd like to, to say that one of the first moments of Berlin being a central place uh, after the turn of the century was in 2000, when we defined for the first time a growth agenda for the entire European Union. Mm -hmm. And this was uh, prepared by a, a German presidency of the European Union together with the Portuguese one. That's why I know the story very well. And we invented by that time the so-called Lisbon Agenda, an agenda for growth, jobs, uh, betting on innovation in Europe as the best road to avoid the kind of um, uh, sacrificing the European social model. This was a big choice. I remember this time this was also prepared with upcoming new member states. Mm. Uh, they were really supporting this new agenda as an innovative one. But now my point is that we are right now with the same challenge of defining a growth agenda for Europe, which now needs to be concerned with other issues, and notably climate, Climate change should be at the center of our next growth agenda, as well driving the best we can the digital revolution. So right now, we are inventing an agenda for the next 10 years. Then I remember another moment when we had the collapse of the Constitutional Treaty. 
And again, Berlin was a central place to rescue the treaty. And after the collapse of the conditional treaty in 2004 and 2005, we could start preparing a new treaty, hmm, which was called the Lisbon Treaty, but in fact was prepared between Portuguese presidency and German presidency. So I was coming to Berlin very often, to the chancellery, to prepare the content of this treaty. Hmm. Um, well, the treaty has a big potential, uh, but I believe that um, somehow we need to use it the best we can and with a much stronger democratic spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really missing. Mm -hmm. Do we, have a, we have a deep democratic gap in the European Union. A third moment for me, which is not so positive, I must say, was uh, after the financial crisis. Mm -hmm. Uh, because um, in this particular issue, it was much more difficult to build European bridges. In the first moment, European agenda, yes, we built European bridges. In the second moment with the treaty, yes, we built European bridges. But on the third one, it became a very difficult issue. And we are still there. Even I must tell you, to be completely updated, that very recently, for the first time, it was possible to agree on an embryo of a budget for the Eurozone. Mm -hmm. And we were um, looking for this for 10 years of a very difficult debate. Um, the final issue I'd like to underline is what comes next regarding Europe and the world. Because in the meantime, the world changed a lot. Exactly because of the fall of the Berlin Wall. With the fall of the Berlin Wall, we moved from a bipolar world with the race between the United States and Russia to a more multipolar world. Mm -hmm. But the thing we would like to have is to have a multilateral system able to deal with this multipolar world. Mm -hmm. uh, let me tell you something. The politician I work more in my life is the current uh, Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres. I was minister of his uh, government. Mm -hmm. uh, next year, in New York, we'll be discussing the future of the multilateral system. Uh, and let me tell you something. Uh, if there is a future for the multilateral system, it depends a lot on the role to be played by Europeans. European Union now is the most important pillar of the multilateral system. So um, I believe that this is the right moment for us Europeans, and let's use this moment of uh, celebrating the fall of the Berlin Wall for us to discuss how can we bridge among us, but also with the rest of the world. Because we need to cooperate with the rest of the world to tackle the central global challenges, the climate, the trade, the growth, the peace, the poverty, all these challenges can only be really tackled with a stronger spirit of uh, cooperation, and bridging. Mm? So I really believe that uh, celebrating the fall of the Berlin Wall 30 years after should be also uh, be a big moment to think about the future of us as Europeans, but also the future of us as uh, international uh, citizens. So this is my wish for today. And uh, many thanks for your for your attention. Thank you very much. Can you please take your questions and comments? So go ahead and please raise your hand. Okay, we'll start maybe ladies first here in the front. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Erin. I'm a student here at the RCD. 
Thank you for your speech. I'm curious to know a little bit more about um, relationships between the EU and the US for as you're planning the strategy for the next 10 years, especially regarding uh, climate. And does the EU have any negotiations in a way that they can push um, US administration for um, more action in the climate change section? Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your question. This is an extremely important uh, question. Also because more recently we had the full confirmation by Trump administration that uh, uh, they withdraw United States from their commitment regarding the Paris Agreement. So this is very worrying uh, because United States is a big country, is, is a leading country, and uh, they show uh, that they don't understand that we are in face of a real, real problem. They remain in a denial attitude. Let me tell you something which happened to me in September, last September. I was in New York in the General Assembly and the Climate Summit. Mm -hmm. And I listened uh, afterwards to uh, President Trump's speech. Mm -hmm. And this is astonishing because he was uh, really denying that we have a climate problem. And he was saying that uh, at the end of the day, each uh, country can uh, deal uh, alone uh, with uh, whatever the problem. Mm -hmm. So we don't need cooperation. And then we see a lot of other leaders, and of course Guterres as Secretary General, uh, with a completely different message, calling for real cooperation. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to climate, my hope is that as we start having a real in-depth citizens movement, mm -hmm. I was also in New York in the rally organized by Greta Thunberg. So this is part of a large movement which uh, is putting pressure on the European and uh, international institutions to decide. I think a, bit, a big test will depend on Europe because now the upcoming European Commission can meet it with a new green, green deal over the next 100 days. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot can also be done whenever Europe uh, cooperates with other partners, because Europe remains a very powerful actor. When we negotiate trade agreements, strategic partnerships, we should include this concern with climate in such a way that uh, United States will understand they can no longer remain in isolation. Because uh, we see others joining. Uh, China is joining. Even Russia is much more open. Mm -hmm. uh, and so let's also work with the, um, the part of American public opinion who does understand this. Uh, but in any case, I believe that uh, uh, Europe will play a central role to change uh, the direction of the planet when it comes to climate. This is my, my really belief. Thank you. The second question here, please. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I'm a student here at ICD. My name is Shikha. Um, so you mentioned that um, there is a quintessential need for a much stronger democratic ties between the EU countries. Um, so and being and since EU is the pillar of a multipolar system, what according to you, or what kind of measures according to you should be um, used in order to step up? Um, or to deepen the cooperation between the EU countries? Well, again, a very good question. We are starting a new uh, period of five years. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the key decisions will be taken over the next uh, months. Look, I, I really believe that uh, um, we uh, need to prepare our growth agenda uh, with this new concern with climate, as I was saying and also making the best of digital revolution because this is changing everything in our life. And I believe there is a European way to uh, drive the digital revolution 
which is different from the American one or the Chinese. Hmm? It's different, why? First of all, because we want to respect uh, citizens and privacy. Hmm? We are conservatives. Secondly, because um, we want to have uh, the freedom of choosing between different platforms. Hmm? We cannot just sell in the information about ourselves to get access to services. We don't like this kind of approach. Third, because when it comes working for online platforms, and we have millions of people now working for online platforms, we want uh, to make sure that these people have decent working conditions, meaning labor contracts, access to social protection. Hmm? This is different from the American model or Chinese model. Hmm? And finally, because we want to protect our democracies from fake news and this kind of uh, disruption. So I really believe that we Europeans, we need to assert our view on how to make the best of the digital revolution. Then I think that in order to um, undertake this uh, uh, big agenda, uh, we also need to have the financial means. Because at the end of the day, if we don't have the financial means, this will not work. Right now, of course, this depends on financial markets. Mm -hmm. Example, we are discussing a lot how to have green financial markets, supporting greening of our economy. Depends a lot on national budgets, but also depends on the, the European budget which is negotiated right now and should be used as a catalyst for this, uh, for this transformation. Then, uh, let me also tell you um, uh, that uh, there is something uniting Europeans, and this point was made this afternoon by many speakers, which is our attachment to freedom, very important, but um, also our attachment to a better life. Mm -hmm. And the better life uh, means to make this uh, energy transition now, but also to have good living conditions. Mm -hmm. And you should know that recently um, the European uh, institutions adopted something new called the European Social Pillar, which is uh, updating our welfare system for the future. And uh, by coincidence, yesterday has had a very good talk with a new commissioner for social affairs, a Luxembourg uh, ish, uh, one, who wants um, to work with us on preparing an action plan for this. Mm? So I hope this will improve really living conditions everywhere because we, we, do, we still have many differences across Europe. Mm? When you think about wages and working conditions and so on, uh, so, um, unity also will depend on this, I believe. Excellent. We need to conclude there, so if you could please express our sincere gratitude once again. Thank you.